Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another video from Pitley Steam Railway. Now, a while back I did a couple of videos on the Inglenook shunting puzzle, which is basically a little game you can play on your layout that involves shunting wagons to form up a train, and those videos went down really well with you guys. Well, recently a curious scale have sent me several new wagons to check out, you may have seen my recent review on the 21 ton mineral wagons, and so I thought let's really put them to the test by doing another Inglenook puzzle. And of course, if you like the look of these wagons yourself, well, there's links in the description to all the different packs on the Acura Scale website, along with the manners as well, if there's any left. Uh, so should you want to pick up any of those for yourself, you can just click those links. Right, before we dive in and start shunting wagons about, I'll just do a quick refresher of the rules for the Inglenook shunting puzzle, just in case you don't already know how the game works. And to be honest, I could do with reminding myself how to play anyway. So the rules of the Inglenook shunting puzzle are fairly simple. You have eight wagons and you need to shunt them to create a freight train consisting of five wagons in a specific order. How you decide that order is up to you. Personally, I assign each wagon a number and then I run them through a random number generator to see what train I need to create. To shunt your wagons, you have access to three sidings. Technically, I only have two at the front here, but I'm also going to use the main line as my third siding. The most important bit though is the number of wagons you're allowed to leave in each siding. So for the front two sidings I can leave three wagons in each of these, and then for the third siding or the main line I'm allowed to leave five wagons there, and so I'll have to think things through a bit before any movements to make sure I don't overload them. Finally to access the sidings you have your head shunt, which for me is platform two, and here I'm allowed three wagons and the loco. Hopefully that all makes sense, so let's get started. I've run all the wagons through my number generator and this is the train it's requested. Starting from the left, which is the rear of the train, we have those two brown mineral wagons which initially looks like it's already done but look closely at the white stripes at the ends of the wagon and you'll see they actually need to be the other way around so that's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, next we have one of the grey mineral wagons, this is the one with the large black info panels on it and then the white stripe to the left. And then it's one of the coil A wagons, the one with the blue tarpaulin, so that's nice and easy to identify at least. And then at the very front of the train we have another grey mineral wagon with the stripe on the right this time. So before we can do any actual shunting, we need a loco to be able to move all our wagons around. So let's see what we have coming out of the shed here. As you may have already guessed, it is the Rapido Hunslet. And actually, for those of you who have been paying attention, uh, this is the same Rapido Hunslet that I upgraded a few videos ago. So uh, yeah, this is the one that I've customized to look like Primrose Number 2, as I remember it from the MC and Bolton Abbey Steam Railway when I saw it there in my childhood and then later ended up volunteering there. So um, yeah, it's really nice to have this one out on the channel again. Um, I know I sort of ran it fairly recently in that upgrade video I did, but... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put it to the test, and especially with that stay alive that I installed in this loco, we'll, we'll see just how capable it is of doing some shunting today. So, on to the actual shunting. Generally, when I do the Inglenook puzzle, I like to start from the rear of the train first and work my way forward. So, the rear of the train in this instance is the left on that little diagram you can see on screen. And like I said, the first thing I'm going to need to do is swap these two brown wagons around, because they are in the wrong order at the moment. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the first of the brown wagons. So yeah, you can see that those stripes are the opposite way around that they should be. The white stripes at the ends of the wagons, they should be on the two outer sides rather than sort of on the inner sides. Anyway, I'm going to take this wagon here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the middle siding where we've got those other grey mineral wagons because I think the third wagon along I need is actually at the end of that siding. So what I can do is I can sort of use getting this wagon out of the way and then also put the other grey mineral wagon, uh, the middle grey wagon, mineral wagon, middle grey mineral wagon. <laughs> Try saying that three times quickly. Anyway, I'm going to put that onto the, uh, onto the other brown wagon and in the process of sort of swapping these two brown wagons around. Yeah, really nice smooth control on this Rapido Hunslet. Um, it is a really nice runner, and especially now that it's got the sound fitted and that it's got the um, stay alive in there as well. Really, really, really nice runner. Yeah. 
So with all these wagons coupled up, I can now move these over to the long siding. So yeah, it's not this rusty mineral wagon here, it's this one on the very end. That is the next one along, so it's, it's the third wagon in the train. So what I can do is, as I'm moving all these wagons around, I can propel that onto the other brown mineral wagon and then I'll just have to figure out how to get this brown one that's right in front of the loco at the moment. I've got to get that to the back of the train, so um, that's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think I've got an idea on how to do that. But first we just need to propel these through the points. And obviously the Acura scale wagons are holding up really well here. I mean, they're beautiful runners and you can see that I'm, pro I'm propelling them through the double slip here and, and the points. No issues whatsoever. Um, yeah, really nice smooth runners. No derailments at all. Yeah. So like I said, I'm just going to put this grey mineral wagon that's on the end of this little train here. I'm going to couple that up to the grey mineral wagon that we have on the main line here. And then at least we have the second and the third wagons in the right order. But what I'm going to do now is I've just uncoupled these front two wagons. I need to get this brown wagon to be behind those other two wagons that we've left in this siding. So that's going to be a bit tricky. But the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put these back in siding number two, the middle siding, which is now completely empty. And what I can then do is I can go back and get the other two wagons that I've put, the number two and three wagons, and I can bring those into the head shunt and then propel them onto the brown wagon, pick up the brown wagon, and hopefully put them back on the main line. So that's my rough plan. I'm assuming that's all going to work, um, but we'll, we'll see as we go along. Obviously, I'm okay in the head shunt here with just a loco and two wagons, so I could have an extra wagon here if I wanted it as well. So with the loco uncoupled, I'll leave these two wagons here for the moment. I'll go and collect the other two wagons that are in the long siding, and then I can bring them into this siding to pick up the final brown mineral wagon. By the way, you might as well just see in the background there, there was another brown mineral wagon. Um, the Acura scale packs come in sets of three, so you get three wagons in each pack. Obviously that meant I then had nine wagons, but the Inglenook shunting puzzle only needs eight wagons. so. I thought, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll still have the uh, the brown mineral wagon there in the siding, so you can you can still see it. It's it's still in the video somehow. It's it's not been left out. But yeah, a uh, big thank you to Akira Scale for sending over all these wagons so I could make this video. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's really nice to have uh, such high quality wagons to do this with. Um, I mean, it certainly makes a change from the chunky Hornby wagons from the 80s that I've used in the past for these videos. So yeah, now with these wagons picked up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and collect up that one final brown mineral wagon that is in the siding. So if my calculations are correct, that will mean we have the front three wagons of the train all in the right order. And one of the things that's great about having the layout a bit more finished now is of course I've got all the point motors installed and they're all sort of hooked up to the control system as well. So that's great because it means I can be a lot more hands off with the layout. You know, I can run a train into platform two and then just change the points automatically and then run it out into the siding. So um, yeah, it's nice when you don't have to use the hand of God quite so much. And for those of you wondering, by the way, I know I'm only allowed to have three wagons in this siding, but that's three wagons that I'm allowed to leave here. So obviously this will be with these two wagons and the two wagons that are in here already. It's four wagons, but as you can see, I'm blocking the exit to the siding. So I wouldn't be able to leave four wagons here, but that's fine because that's not what I'm doing anyway. I'm now going to take these three wagons. So it's the grey mineral wagon and then the two brown mineral wagons at the back of the train now in the correct order. So uh, yeah, that's all good. And of course in the head shunt I'm allowed three wagons and a loco just to remind you again. So this is the absolute limit of what I could fit in the head shunt here. 
Obviously, I could fit a lot more into platform too, but that's just the rules of the game. I'm sort of playing by honor rules today. But yeah, you could quite easily build a Inglenook shunting puzzle out, which is literally the head shunt and the three sidings all to the correct sizes. Uh, if you didn't know, the reason it's called the Inglenook shunting puzzle is because it was designed to be able to fit in the Inglenook of a house, which is the space between a chimney breast and, and the wall. I believe that's right anyway. So yeah, obviously it depends on the length of the wagons that you use, but um, generally you could do that. Or you could have it as part of a larger layout as well. So you could have, you know, a double track main line and then a little shunting yard somewhere else. And uh, and that shunting yard meets the sort of standards for the Inglenook shunting puzzle. And so, yeah, you could have trains running around the main circuit while you do some shunting puzzles in the sidings. Anyway, we've got those first three wagons sorted out now. They're all in the correct order. By the way, I keep referring to them as the first three wagons, but technically they're the last three wagons. It's just because I prefer to start from the rear of the train and work my way forwards. I found that's quite a good technique for getting these puzzles solved. So if you are trying out the Inglenook shunting puzzle and uh, you, you don't, you get a bit stuck, uh, my recommendation would be start from the back and then work your way forwards, uh, which is what I've done here and it seems to work quite well. And yeah, there is that lone brown mineral wagon lurking away in the sidings there still. So now we need to have a look at the Coil A wagons. Uh, these haven't featured as much yet, but don't worry, there is a review on these coming fairly soon as well. It's actually the one with the blue tarpaulin that I need to uh, go in the middle of the train. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this one with the sort of lighter gray tarpaulin out of the way. So thankfully these are a bit more easy to identify uh, with the different coloured tarpaulins on them. Uh, and for those of you wondering as well, the tarpaulins are completely removable. Um, yeah, they, they come off and you can see the really intricate detail on the inside of the wagons. Like I said, I'll be going into more detail on that when I do a review on these fairly soon. But uh, yeah, just for the Inglenook shunting puzzle, it made more sense to, uh, to make them easily identifiable with the different coloured hoods. So on first glance, it might just look like I'm putting this wagon here to get it out of the way, but actually I have a plan here, which is to get the final mineral wagon, the final gray mineral wagon that will go on the front of the train. You can just see it there up against the buffers. So that needs to go in front of the coil A wagon with the blue tarpaulin. So to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, I'm gonna bring out that final mineral wagon from the rear of that siding, put it in front of the coil A wagon with the blue tarpaulin and then get rid of these two wagons that are behind the loco. So the, the coil A with the gray tarpaulin and the rusty mineral wagon as well. Trying to keep track of all these wagons is uh, proving a bit of a challenge, but then that is the point of the Hinglenook shunting puzzle. So three wagons in the head shunt there again. I haven't gone beyond the points fully this time, but um, it's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll pretend the signalman didn't notice. And of course, this is going to be really filling up this siding. But like I said before, I can leave this extra wagon here as long as I don't leave the other two wagons here, because then I would be blocking the points. This mineral wagon is then going to couple up to the blue coil A wagon there. And that is the front two wagons of our train. So I'm now just going to disconnect the front two wagons and we can take these off and we'll dispose of them in the siding. Also, I know I'm going to get asked this, so I might as well just address it now. Um, Everyone, whenever I do one of these videos, always asks how I do the uncoupling um, because I think people sort of seem impressed that it, it seems to happen so seamlessly and with tension lock couplings. I'm afraid there's no big secret to it. It's I literally just do it off camera. So it's it's clever editing. It's it's no clever mechanism below the track or anything that's um, that's causing remote uncoupling. It's just, yeah, I cut the camera, I uncouple the wagons and uh, and then I turn the camera back on again. So um, yeah, that's, that's why uh, the uncoupling seems so seamless. So as you can see here, there was a cut in the video there and then the loco has detached from the wagons. So yeah, the uh, wonders of movie magic there. So with those two wagons out of the way, there's now basically nothing stopping us from forming up the rest of our train. So we're just gonna pick up those final two wagons, which are the blue coil A wagon, the one with the blue tarpaulin on it, and then that final gray mineral wagon. And then we can just go and take those into the long siding, aka the main line, and we can put those on the front of our train and we'll form up the whole thing. 
So we'll just pick up these here, get coupled up, and then we can uh, take them off. And yeah, in case you had any doubts, the Coil A's are really nice running wagons as well. I know they haven't really featured all that much in this video. There's only one of them that's actually needed to form up the train. And that is sort of the random nature of how the Ingle Nook shunting puzzle works. Like I said, though, I will be doing a review on these uh, in, in the near future, hopefully. So those are the wagons for the very front of the train. Just propelling them through the points. Again, no issues at all. Very nice running. And then here we go. We can put the whole train together. So yeah, there we go. That is the full train together. That is this Inglenook shunting puzzle complete. And let's just check the work here. So we've got that first grey mineral wagon, followed by the coil A with the blue tarpaulin, then the other grey mineral wagon, and then finally those two brown mineral wagons with the white stripes on the outer end. So yeah, that is all correct. So yeah, I'll just pull them into platform two. And of course, if you were going to do this yourself, there are loads of different combinations to, that make up this puzzle. I think there's something like over 100,000 of different combinations that these wagons could be put together. So yeah, pretty impressive. And also just as a last little treat as well, I've got the Sentinel here pulling a rake of the Acura Scale Cauldron or Children wagons. I never quite know how they're supposed to be pronounced. I think it's Children actually. But yeah, very nice little wagons there. Um, very, very different from the larger mineral wagons and the coil A's that we've got, but uh, yeah, just uh, just giving you a look at the full range of, of Acura scale wagons here. And as you can probably hear, this Sentinel has also been fitted for sound and it's got a stay alive in there as well, so uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have a video on that coming fairly soon too. And so with the signal set to clear, we can take our little freight train and run it off round the layout. Obviously, I don't have a brake van on the back of this at the moment, but uh, that's just because I really wanted to feature these Acura Scale wagons today. And a big thank you to Acura Scale for sending over these wagons so I could feature them in this video. Of course, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to check some of these out for yourself, there's a link down in the description. Uh, head over to their website before they all sell out. And yeah, it's been great to put these through their paces in a real sort of shunting session. Anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, do check out those Acura scale wagons. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!